Alrighty, we're back. So, in this video, we're just going to straight up prove that something is a vector space. And so, we're going to take this problem then from the textbook. This is 4 to 20, fourth edition of the textbook. I think it's number 12 if you have the third edition. And the problem is this on R, plus, uh, the set. of positive real numbers define the operations of addition which is denoted like that and scalar multiplication which is a circle with a dot in it, as follows. And we have x plus y is equal to xy, and c, scalar multiply x, then, let me get rid of those signs, c multiply x is equal to x to the c. And so that's addition, and we have our scalar multiplication defined as essentially raising something to an exponent. So addition, right, it's like the previous problem, if you watch the previous video, where addition is defined wonkily, in this case it's essentially just multiplication, and then scalar multiplication is defined differently, and in this case it's raising something to an exponent, okay? And so we want to see if this is a vector space or not. So what do we have to do? Well, we have to check then our 10 axioms of a vector space, which you more or less just have to memorize. If you take a abstract algebra class, it'll become a lot easier, but in this class, then we essentially have to memorize it. So addition, right? Okay, well, x plus y is equal to xy, which is gonna be an r plus, because x is an r plus, oops, right? x is an r plus, y is an r plus, and so when you multiply two positive numbers in the positive reals, you're going to get something back in the positive reals. Okay? And so, all right, cool. Let's close our addition. What else is there? Uh, there is then associativity of addition. All right? And so what do you want then? You want x plus y plus z is equal to x plus y plus z, okay? And is this true? I mean, yeah, it is, right? Because over here, you get x, y then plus z, and then on the right-hand side, you get x plus y, z, because of how addition is defined, right? And then you get x, y, z is equal to x, y, z. And so, yeah, that works. Three, commutativity. That's a plus. So you get x plus y is this equal to y plus x. And I mean, right, addition is essentially just multiplication at this point. So you get is xy equal to yx? Yeah, it is. You're in the positive real numbers. Yeah, so this is commutative. Okay, that's good. Four. Additive identity. Okay, so is there then is there something for the additive identity? And the answer is yeah, there is. Uh, the additive identity is right. So you got x plus x inverse, or no, sorry, that's the inverse. X plus let's say i is equal to x, right? Well, then you have xi is equal to x, which means i is simply one, right? And this is in the real positives, so this then is your additive identity, okay? Alrighty, so identity is one, uh, so what's the additive inverse? 
Well, for every x, you need an x inverse such that it's equal to the additive identity. All right. Remember, the additive inverse is x inverse, right? For every x, there exists x inverse such that x plus x inverse is equal to the additive identity. And remember, the additive identity is not always 0. And so x inverse isn't always just negative x, right? And in our case, the additive, additive identity is 1, right? And so we see that this becomes x times x inverse is equal to 1, which means x inverse is defined as 1 over x, all right? So for every x, the inverse is 1 over x. And that's the additive inverse. Now, here's the question. Does this create a problem, right? Can x be 0? What if x is 0? Remember, there's this problem. This, 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 this became a problem in the previous video. What if x is 0? Well, the answer to this is x can't be 0. Why, what, what? Why can't x be 0? Well, it's because it's because we defined it on the set of positive numbers. And 0 is technically not positive. 0 is non-negative. There's a difference between non-negative and positive. I know. Um, but yeah, we don't have to worry about 0. So yeah, so the additive inverse exists for every, for every uh, x in our set, right? For every x, and the quantif qualifier here then is in R plus. What's next? Is it closed under scalar multiplication? I mean, yeah, x c times c scalar multiply x is equal to x to the c. Well, x raised to any power is going to be positive if x is positive. So this is an r plus, and so that's closed. OK. Uh, what else then is there? Is there, let's say, distributivity of the scalar over vector addition? That is, is C times X plus Y equal to C times X plus C times Y? All right, and we're going to see that we get c times x plus y is equal to c times xy, right, because x plus y is just multiplication, which is equal to xy to the c, right, xy as an entire quantity. And then if we distribute, we can distribute this exponent. This is equal to x to the c, y to the c. Well, what is x to the c, y to the c? That's equal to x to the c plus y to the c, right? Because of our weird addition. And then this is actually equal to c, scalar multiply x, plus c, scalar multiply y. Because x to the c is equal to c multiply x. And so, yeah, this is actually closed under distributivity of scalar over vector addition. Now we need to find the distributivity of scalar addition all right, and what does that mean? This means that I need c plus k multiplied by v is equal to c scalar multiply v plus k scalar multiply v. All right. And so what do I get? Well, c plus k is ck scalar multiply v, right? 
And okay, so let's write uh, let's write this this way. So we got c plus k scalar multiplying v, which is equal to c k scalar multiplying v, because of our addition, which is v to the c k. All right, but this is the same thing as saying what? Well, this is the same thing as saying. Hold on. Do 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 do. Is addition for scalars actually defined in this way? That's what I'm trying to figure out right now. Uh, let me pause this video real quick. I need to figure out one thing. If if scalars are supposed to be defined in this certain way. How do I pause? Okay, so I don't think that because scalars aren't vectors, we're not supposed to actually define uh, scalar addition in that way. So this is actually C plus K scalar multiplying V. And so what do I get? Then this is actually V times C plus K. Yeah, this one, this question is a bit, a bit weird. Um, I'm actually gonna let me make sure that this is what I think it is. Okay, so yeah, so scalar addition is different than vector addition. Okay, so this is scalar addition, um, and this this is scalar addition. And this is vector addition. All right, and so scalar addition actually just behaves like you think it does. And so over here, then this is equal to v to the c plus k. And notice it's not the round circle plus. So when you're adding scalars, the scalars don't follow this addition sign right here. The scalars don't follow that addition sign because scalars aren't vectors. Okay. So because scalars are not vectors, this is regular addition. And then this plus is vector addition. All right. So you got to you got to make that got to distinguish that. Yeah, it's 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 this is difficult. This isn't this isn't very straightforward stuff here. And so okay. And so v to the ck, that's v to the c plus v to the k, or v to the c times v to the k, which ends up being v to the c with this weird plus v to the k, which is then c scalar multiply v plus k scalar multiply v, because v to the c is equal to c scalar multiply v, and so forth, v to the k, v to the k scalar multiply v. So yeah, um, it is distribute. We can distribute it, all right. And then nine, uh, we want associativity of scalar mult. So essentially, we want C K scalar multiply V is equal to C K scalar multiply V. And so what do I get? Well, okay, so what is C K scalar multiply V? Well, this is then C scalar multiplying V to the K. All right. Why is it that? Well, it's because K scalar multiply V 
this is a vector. This is a this is an element in R plus. This is a vector, which then means that C ends up multiplying a vector, which means that C has to scale or multiply this vector. Okay, and so this is then equal to C uh, or or v to the k to the C, which is simply v to the kc. All right. Well, this is also equal to v to the ck, which is then equal to ck scalar multiplying v. So, yes, it is associative under scalar multiplication. And finally, 10 is a unit property. And so we have 1 is a scalar. And so 1 times x or 1 times v is equal to v to the 1, which is equal to v for every v in r plus and so one so you have this identity scaler essentially so you need an identity scaler as well and so here are the 10 properties and yeah so the 10 properties they're all satisfied okay and so we have proven that the set of real numbers that are positive defined under this wonky addition and wonky scalar multiplication is actually a vector space. And this is what you have to do. So you usually don't have to do this for an exam. You don't usually have to like pound out all 10 axioms of a vector space. What usually happens then is what we're gonna see in the next section where you have to show something's a subspace or not. And so this is it for vector spaces. Long videos, I know, but it, Vector spaces are probably the most challenging to understand conceptually, and this stuff right here also is pretty difficult as well. So, all right. So we'll talk about we'll talk about subspaces in the next video, and hopefully these two vector space videos get you guys through then what you need to do homework problems on vector spaces.